All right. We'll do some of this, some of this, some of that. I ate too much pizza. I have the amazing idea. Brandon, Brandon. Let's get some stuffed crust pizza. And he's like, oh, but I want to eat healthy. I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. And then, and then he's like, it sounds like such a great idea. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And we did. And then we ate too much pizza. I ate almost four slices. And I feel, oh, I feel just as full as when I go to Indian Buffet with my family. That's a place where if I go there, Indian Buffet, then I eat, 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 eat too much. I eat more than I eat at Indian Buffets and eat stuffed crust pizza. So I just I ate too much and I'm really full. And so I thought I'd turn this on so I could ramble or whatever while I'm cleaning Polka's house. Uh, Polka, I need to take her to the to the vet ASAP because her teeth are... I have her appointment scheduled for Monday to get her teeth trimmed, but she needs to go sooner than that. So hopefully tomorrow I can call and get something scheduled um, for after I get off work and we can take her there real quick because she's starting to lose weight and she's not really eating much. Um, so I had to break her food up into all smart, small little pieces and so hopefully she'll feel better once um once I get her teeth trimmed. So I'm just cleaning her house, just going through and scooping up the scoopy stuff. Hope is an old guinea pig. She's like six years old. So I've been playing around on Bumble, talking to people, trying to make a new friend because I've been feeling lonely or whatever. Just want to communicate with people. And I've been having a great conversations with Aza lately. Um, talking, doing 20 questions. So we've been having fun asking each other questions and answering. So that's been really nice and really bonding and makes me feel good to have a friend as close as her who wants to communicate with me so often. So I guess I'm just hoping that maybe, you never know, I might find someone here who likes to communicate and hang out and talk all the time and be really social but close and relatable and has a lot in common but it's okay to feel lonely too I guess I just got inspired a few nights ago when oh uh, it was like two nights ago or something I was like I'll just play around on Bumble again and start communicating with some people see if I find anybody interesting so I might be going hiking with someone in a couple weeks and now we're joking about like because she's scared about meeting up alone and because <laughs> then I was like I'm gonna bring Brandon and she's like oh no and then we make me nervous and I'm like bring somebody too we can plot to kill each other together and and so we've been plotting on how we're gonna kill each other so <laughs> that guy hella dark quick So that's been kind of fun. It actually gave me a lot of anxiety last night after I made my vlog um, about my conversation with my aunt. Then I read a message from her. Uh, I got. I was already super taking things personally, so I got pissed. <laughs> I was like, "Well, we're gonna go hiking regardless. So if you want to come hiking with us, cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I might. I might kill you. You never know." So, I don't know. I just was getting really dramatic. But I'm doing better today. My anxiety level, I woke up with anxiety, but I, I read some from my attached book that Lolly gave me. And um, just been, and I'd worked on my garden. I got my porch looking really good. 
being focused on and all that and just taking it slow. Excuse me, Polka. Hey, Polka baby, come here. Polka just having a hard day today. She's just not feeling too hot. She didn't even want to eat her, um, her liquid food stuff. So I had to tear up a bunch of lettuce pieces for her and she ate those, some of them, not as much as she usually does. So I'm just gonna get her to the vet, get her teeth trimmed. And hopefully after that, then she'll be feeling better and back to eating normal. I just went a week or two too long. I try and get her teeth trimmed every month, but I didn't schedule our appointment in time, and so now we're just a little bit behind. Talking to people is kind of fun, but it's also kind of annoying or overwhelming. Communicating with people is kind of hard sometimes. Glad I got Brandon. Um, it's really nice to have him here, and uh, he's so understanding and chill and um, such a secure attachment style. So it's, it's just nice. And so sometimes I get lonely. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to make a friend. And I have a couple friends here who I hang out with and I can hit up. I don't know. I just... I just get um, so caught up in what I want the friendships to be and how I want people to relate to me or connect to me. And then I get bent out of shape and sad because like um, sometimes I make friends with someone who I want to talk to a lot more and then they're not quite as social as I am and so then I put my hopes and expectations like all into like a specific friendship or something and um, and so I, uh, and it's not just that way with my friends here, but with, um, uh, like Lolly or my sister, for example, like I would love to talk to them more often and if they had more of an interest, um, or social ability to be able to communicate with me more often, I imagine that it would help me feel a bit more socially fulfilled because I'm really close with them, but um, it just doesn't work out. So, I accept those relationships the way they are, and those people that I love the way they are, and that is just fine, and I will not beg or force anyone to be anything other than they are, or be any, as, any more social than they are. Because people gotta be exactly how they are, and that's completely acceptable. And I don't want to get caught up in drama, or making drama, or stuff like that. Um, I'm really blessed that Aza is here and wants to talk to me so consistently. That makes me feel really good. It makes me feel really loved, and I know that I make her feel really loved every day too. So it's it's nice um, to have somebody who cares so much and wants the same thing that I do. And of course I have Brandon and he is consistently here for me every day. And I have Elaine. I have all my animal companions. So, I don't know. I'm reading about from the attack.
trash book that Lolly gave me. The young poke. <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes, like, this book talks about dependency as a positive thing. And it says, like, that it's inevitable for you to be dependent on people. And... And I think that that's an interesting thing to read because, as it says in the book, society is deemed dependency as like a bad thing. And um, so, some of the time, for a while, I have been focusing, and it just goes a lot in line along with the avoidant attachment thing. I have been avoiding allowing myself to be close with people, like specific people who I really am close to or I feel a really strong attachment to because um, if they ever leave I want to be able to deal and exist effectively without them there. And so, for many years now, I've kind of been really careful about who I let be close to me, and if someone, like, if someone's really getting close with me, I say, it's okay, if you're not gonna be there, I can deal, and I'm good at letting go of people, and if people gotta go, they gotta go. And, um, so I just, I just didn't realize that I'm such an avoidant attachment style. I didn't know that I would fall into that category, but after doing research about it and learning more about it from this book, I realized that I fall into a lot of those categories. Not all of them. But it's kind of interesting because in the little survey thing, it said I'm 5% anxious attachment. Or, I'm sorry. I had 5 points towards anxious attachment, 7 points towards secure attachment, and then 6 points towards avoidant attachment. And so, um, it's just interesting. Maybe I'll talk about this more later. I don't know. I, uh... Sometimes I've explained to Brandon that I only see it as a bad thing because I avoid attachment because then, like, then I can better deal when people leave. <laughs> but the whole fact that I feel as though I need to prepare myself for when people leave is a sign of avoidant attachment. While if you're securely attached, you know that people will come and go. And that's completely fine, because that's how existence is. And I guess I just, I get so much pain from people that I love going that I have to persuade myself and convince myself of all the ways that it's completely okay. So I have to force myself to be able to accept it. Um, or be able to view it more positively. Um, so I have to really work hard at it. And with some people it's easier than others, but if I'm really close to them, it's hard. So maybe I've been reading the attachment book most days when I wake up in the morning. Um, so maybe 
maybe tomorrow if I wake up early enough I can read some more, but lately for work I've just been waking up with not enough time to do reading or anything. So I'll probably, usually I just listen to podcasts while at work and work on my mental health that way by listening to podcasts and writing post-its. But we'll see. Maybe I'll wake up early enough to learn more from this book. I like reading this book. It's it's interesting. <laughs> Attached. Um, so far it seems as though it's been helpful in helping me understand that having a dependency and love for someone and um, and realizing and understanding that it's okay to love this person and be attached to this person because I'm just so afraid of attachments falling apart and breaking them. working on it. Well, thanks for listening and we'll see where it goes from here. Be sure to like and subscribe.